right, thanks very much. Pleasure to be uh, you know, speaking again uh, at my first uh, innovations conference. This is actually a very similar talk. I promise Dr. Alva and I did not uh, collaborate here, but it is a little bit reassuring for me as a newer faculty that I'm you know, kind of citing a lot of the same studies as someone with a little more experience in practice. Um, hopefully this will help just kind of reinforce some of these same ideas, but I know we are also trying to get um, ahead of schedule if possible. And, um, <laughs> You know, I'll try not to belabor a lot of the same points that she made. So we'll, we'll be talking about competing risks of small renal masses. You know, um, as Dr. Alba mentioned, we as a community do understand these uh, hold low uh, malignant potential, but still um, as a whole, um, we're seeing a lot of overtreatment. So really understanding the, the true risk of a, of a small renal mass when that comes into your clinic and uh, understanding that in the context of other competing risks that your patient may be facing due to their overall health. Um, I have no disclosures. Uh, so again, we'll be you know, covering those objectives that I just discussed. Um, you know, what is a small renal mass? You know, just important to understand the definition here. Uh, we're talking about something that's less than four centimeters. We're not talking about cystic lesions. Those harbor even less risk, less metastatic potential um, than a true solid lesion. Uh, we're not talking about fat containing, containing tumors since those are typically benign. Um, and, you know, what's the first thing to know, um, just to reinforce this, they're often benign and it is a function of size. Um, this data comes from a, um, a pooled analysis um, of different studies where a patient had a suspicious renal mass on imaging, no biopsy was performed, and then surgery was performed for that renal mass. And we're looking at what was the pathology, was it cancer, was it benign, and um, stratifying that by size. And so we can see that for very small masses, less than one centimeter, the rate is very high for it being benign, 40%. We're roughly in that 20% range when we are having a mass between one and four centimeters. And then the risk of malignancy is much higher once we're above four centimeters. And I was thinking about this, looking at this study, and I, I think this is actually underestimating uh, the rate of these renal masses being benign because these are only the patients who actually underwent surgery. So this is going to represent those masses that looked the most suspicious to us when we were kind of evaluating them on imaging, those masses that had the most enhancement uh, or, or, you know, something like that. So, you know, perhaps there are even higher rates of these masses being benign um, when we consider all patients who maybe underwent surveillance and never, never had any pathology to analyze at all. Oops, can we go back one? Sorry, I got it. And uh, this is the same exact um, you know, study that Dr. Alva presented, but you know, e we know that a lot of these are benign, but even if they are malignant, just to hammer this point home, the vast majority of small renal masses are grade one or grade two, which have a lower malignant potential. Um, we really only see higher risks of higher grade tumors once um, they become larger. Uh, and again, this may look familiar, but this is from the Sloan Kettering database. Uh, this looked at, you know, again, only patients who had surgery. So there's a little bit of a, of a bias there. You know, not all of our small renal mass patients are going to undergo surgery. But they looked at, um, in their database, all patients who underwent surgery for their renal mass and what percentage of those patients had metastasis. Now, of course, there may be some patients who never had surgery due to the presence of those metastasis. So this may be underestimating that risk. But overall, we're seeing essentially no metastatic disease for tumors less than three centimeters. And the risk of metastasis really becomes a higher probability once we're above five centimeters. Uh, and what happens after you treat those tumors? Well, the patients do extremely well. Um, for tumors less than three centimeters, um, essentially none of them develop metastasis uh, at a median follow-up of around three years. So what's that telling us? Well, there wasn't even micrometastatic disease at the time the patients were treated. Uh, because if there were, right, these would have clinically presented uh, while patients were being followed um, after um, their surgery. Uh, so that's just one study that looked at metastatic potential of small renal masses. This was, an, you know, these kind of numbers d are different depending on the study you look at. This was an analysis in the SEER database, uh, which, which did show some incidence of metastasis for these smaller tumors, but overall, again, just extremely low, around 3% for um, renal masses less than 3 centimeters. This is data from Fox Chase. Um, their numbers were just a little higher, so I thought that was interesting. Wanted to include that. Uh, so this is not. Um, so this is uh, again just all patients in their perspective database. We they didn't see any onset of metastatic disease 
for tumors less than two centimeters, but jumped up a little bit higher uh, once they cross that two centimeter threshold. You can see, you know, 10% and upward. Um, but I think overall, we, we all understand that renal masses that are three centimeters or less have a very low malignant potential. So what are the implications of that, right, as, as we kind of discussed in the last session? Um, we have a small mass. Um, the, the slow growth rate, um, you know, allows us to safely watch these a lot of the time. This is a, um, a um, systematic review that was done from Fox Chase, just looking at a number of studies. It's from a number of years ago, but their um, average growth rate was... Uh, 0.3 centimeters per year when all of these were averaged out. Um, and this is also being looked at, um, Dr. Alba mentioned the, um, the DISSRM cohort. Um, you know, very slow growth rates are being seen in this. You know, we also talked about the Toronto series, very slow growth rates. Um, so, you know, what do individual tumors do? This waterfall plot kind of shows that some of them will shrink in size, some of them will grow in size. There's a small number that will grow faster, and potentially those will necessitate an intervention. You know, so just in summary, um, we're to really understand the risk of a small renal mass. Just some summary points, right? Um, they're very often benign, and if they're malignant, it's typically going to be low grade. Um, they have slow growth rates and have low metastatic potential. Um, you know, I didn't know this, but um, when I was, you know, kind of talking about changing the nomenclature of prostate cancer pathology, Dr. Wheeler was telling me that that, that um, this was actually kind of done already for renal cell carcinoma. A number of years ago, these small tumors were actually called renal adenomas. So um, it was the same morphologically, but if it was less than three centimeters, we knew that it didn't really spread, so it was called renal adenoma. Um, so you know that, that, that is kind of interesting. Now we call these carcinoma. Is that maybe leading to, um, you know, some of our patients um, or urologists to overestimating the risk that these tumors have? So, you know, how do we kind of approach this clinically? Let's just remember in the, in the guidelines, we're supposed to be discussing the low oncologic risk of these small masses. We know that patients do excellent no matter what you do. You know, radical, partial, ablation, surveillance, they're going to be alive at five years. There is a little bit higher rate of recurrence with ablation. You can see the recurrence-free survival is a little lower, um, but, you know, you can always offer a repeat ablation if patient's not a good surgical candidate. Um, and so, you know, this, this, all of this is kind of like background for kind of the, the big point that, you know, I think I think about all the time when I'm seeing these patients is understanding what the risk of that tumor is to them versus all other health risks. And so this was a study that looked at, um, you know, uh, similar to what Dr. Alba was presenting, you know, cancer-specific um, survival versus overall survival stratified by a number of indices, um, tumor size, age. Um, you know, management approach, um, comorbidity index. Uh, in every group, the a number of patients who are dying of renal cancers is dwarfed by um, cause of death by other causes. So it's just really important to think about when we see especially a small renal mass that we know um, is probably not going to pose a major threat to our patient. Um, you know, this is also seen in the, in the SEER database, much, much higher rates of non-cancer death for our patients with renal cell carcinoma. So, you know, something that I, I use all the time that um, I, I think is very helpful is this um, uh, nomogram that was developed from Fox Chase. Uh, it's really simple. Um, it's basically you just can plug in the tumor size and the age, and it'll give you a, a five-year um, risk of cancer, uh, kidney cancer-specific mortality and overall um, sort of mortality. And no matter what combination of numbers you put in for a small renal mass, it's going to get dwarfed by, uh, the risk is going to be dwarfed by overall, um, you know, risks uh, to the patient. Uh, this is, doesn't include any comorbidities, of course. This is just for your average health individual. You know, they do have a, um, a separate model that you can incorporate, the Charleston Comorbidity Index. We may not have time to, like, calculate that exactly in our practice, so I'll typically just use the standard one, and I think, okay, that's what it is for an average health patient. Is my patient in front of me? a little bit better or worse than average and, and just kind of just use that as like a grounding point uh, for our discussion about management. And um, the other thing that I, I think about all the time is like just life expectancy in general. Um, you can look this up for any patient. You can type in their age on socialsecurity.gov website uh, and see what their expected life expectancy is for um, 
for just an average health individual, but obviously we probably don't have time for that, so it's good to kind of know these benchmarks. So once you've reached age 78, your average life expectancy is about 10 years, and once you've reached age 85, your life expectancy is on average five years. And you know, we saw you know, those um, cancer-specific mortalities for surveillance for five years. You know, so again, something that probably should be done almost universally for older patients with small renal masses. Um, so, um, so in light of that, are, are small renal masses overtreated? Um, I think, uh, you know, in academic settings, maybe we're doing this a little bit more, but th this is older data. I couldn't find a good source of, of um, something a little bit newer, but, you know, at least, you know, 10, 15 years ago, active surveillance rates were, you know, only about 10% for small renal masses, which, you know, I think we'd all agree, you know, should be a lot higher. Probably that number is higher today, but, um, you know, ultimately, I think understanding like the true risks of these tumors and, and keeping that in mind when seeing our patients will help us, you know, offer intervention for those who are really going to benefit from it the most. And with that, um, I guess we're going to do questions at the end, and thank you for your time.